We were anchored up in Akahootla, the northernmost port of El Salvador. Being an industrial port, it took them a few days to figure out exactly what to do with us, but we eventually settled on four days for $15 a night plus the checkout fees. This gave us just enough time to treat our little turtle friend and reprovision. So I've used some alcohol to disinfect this area and I'll be putting this in basically under a carapace here. Oh no, bubba. She just did a little poo and um, which is a good sign she's at least doing something but this looks very much like styrofoamy plastic to me which isn't great. So I'm gently scraping some of this off just to make sure there's no big injuries under any of it. I already said but this is a little foxbill turtle and normally the better way to do this would be to put her in um, fresh water for a couple of days but we don't really have that option right now and I just want to check if there are any big signs of injuries underneath this muck. In terms of what could be going on it's very hard to know when they're found like this. Um, she's very skinny. This has probably been like this for some time given the amount of growth she's got on her and how her, like her scoots are starting to lift and things like this. And another big worry good girl, is when I flip her over, she's very red and swollen. Like you can see down here, she's got sores around the edge of her shell. She's got redness. She's got a very, very soft, squishy shell, which isn't great. I know, darling. So these are all signs to me she's been sick for some time. Um, in terms with what, yeah, it's hard to know. It could be something like, you know, an algal bloom could have got her sick initially. It could be um, like plastic ingestion is very common, especially in the young ones. They eat silly things, can get hooks and whatnot. Um, the way her shell is shaped is very unusual too on this side, which makes me wonder whether maybe she had, did have an injury at some point. Um, and obviously she also lives right next to a very busy port, so whether some funky chemicals got her, we just don't know. But anyway, we'll keep looking to see what we can find. And now to try and fix this again. And it is almost certainly the gaskets, since I keep having to reseal them and I can't get the proper gaskets yet. drops the one and only seal I did have for the carburetor overboard. I jumped in, obviously, but it sunk before I could get it. so your little eyeballs don't get too dry. I wonder if she has the energy to get a little fed. A little friend is alive and she went for a little bit more of a swim this morning, but you know, that's really gross. She's starting to get a prolapse. And that's often a sign they do have an intestinal blockage. Um, so, yeah, 
when uh, the guy's coming this morning to collect her from the environment, Ministry of Environment here. Okay. And um, he's going to take her to a veterinarian here for further diagnosis and treatment. And I'm just going to, I've sent them a message letting them know what I've done and what I would do for the future for her. So yeah, hopefully we get some updates and find out how she's going and with any luck she survives. We shall see. We managed to wrangle a lift to the local fishing dock with our turtle and a bunch of jerry cans. We handed her over to the Ministry of Environment where we knew she would be getting good veterinary care and be well looked after until her eventual release. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, she gets better. With any luck. We had quite the crowd getting educated on plastic yeah, ingestion in turtles as well. <laughs> Ciao, Bella. We then got a very, very safe ride out to get more fuel, 100 litres in total jerry canned back to the boat. We were very lucky we had some good little helpers with us. So we're under the under the big giant commercial dock here. Where? Coast here and under here. Cargo under the boat is best fishing we've seen. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> You're up. What is your plan from here? I'm going to crawl along the bottom. You're almost definitely going to get tetanus. Oh, no. I told you you needed tetanus injection. On the dock safely. Now to check out. Woo. We just finished dinner. We're officially checked out. We've got a decent weather window by the looks of things to get to Chappas. There is a hurricane forming, but it's way off the coast. Still has me a tiny bit nervous. I'm very grateful to the crew from Sailing Totem because they um, have been in email contact with me and helped me with my weather and passage planning a little bit and reassuring me that I have nothing to worry about. <laughs> but yeah, we're nearly there. Are you ready? Let's do it. Just stuffing Kimo on my face. Fair enough.
looks like it might be a bit of an overcast day or at least morning which isn't the worst thing because it means it's a little less hot um, we were able to put the sails up just for a tiny bit this morning motoring but every now and then we get a breeze like just then but for the most part there's really no wind unfortunately the uh, the hurricane which is freaking me out is actually having the opposite effect where it's basically sucking all the wind away from us <laughs> and yeah so I definitely needn't have been so worried about it um, but I guess you know part of the uh, stress or nerves is also because like I just once we get to Mexico like you know it's the next step and I haven't exactly planned everything out because it's kind of just been like let's just get there and then we you know plan the rest so I think that part of it kind of like adds to my nerves where like I'm stressing about the weather and different things for the trip but like it's actually kind of the I'm nervous about other things but anyway um yeah I've been very it's been really awesome too like I said uh the guys from Sailing Totem were really awesome about helping with weather but I've also I messaged Maria um, and Nika all the time and you know with questions like uh, Maria in particular you know she's been sailing like her whole life and is just such a guru on boats and it's so nice to be able to be like Maria like in these conditions is it better to motor sail or to do this or to do that or to lift the keel or have the keel down or you know and she always seems to know the answer so it's awesome yeah anyway Jim's having a little nap, I'm on watch for a while and hopefully, I mean, I think we're going to be motoring pretty much the whole time. Maybe we get a little sailing in here and there, but hopefully it's just smooth and we get to Chiapas in good time would be really nice. Jim pre-prepared rice and beans, so I'm going to make us some burritos. You might not be able to tell, but we are on a lean, so it's making all the cooking just a little more difficult. Tell you they'll never do it again so we 
basically don't want to spend, you know, like 20 hours going two knots up the coast um, tonight kind of thing when we could spend, you know, 10 hours going five knots a day. So that's kind of what we're doing. We're just kind of trying to get there quickly and just sailing when it's like really optimum conditions. But the other thing is, you probably noticed looking at the sails today, like the head sail is actually kind of tearing in places. The main sail only looks fractionally better. All the ropes are frayed. So to sail at night, especially on a night like tonight where there isn't a lot of uh, moon, so we can't see a squall coming, we will only be able to feel the wind change. And basically if we don't reef fast enough, I worry like my sailing equipment can't handle it. And yeah, so anyway. Spirits are much higher than the last trip. I guess in hindsight, we both almost certainly had some sort of stomach or like, you know, tummy virus or food poisoning or something. And that's why we were both so miserable with that last trip. Because uh, even our energy levels and everything in hindsight, you know, we thought the storm kind of threw us off the night before, but I think it might've been that we were getting sick. So, so far it's been a much nicer. So it's been a much nicer um, boating experience so far. Really? Yeah. That, like, that would be eerie. Yeah, I know. But I guess because it's so clear, but I would get freaked out. It's not actually that deep here. No, it's just the expanse. Yeah. No, I would, I would be creeped out. Like that. Our little turtle friend was eventually released after pooping out more and more plastic until she eventually felt better. Having a patient like her with plastic ingestion makes me even more determined to share our stories with you all to help improve the planet in every way possible. I'd love to ask each of you to collect three pieces of rubbish on my behalf today. Next episode, we continue on with Mexico in our sights. Until next time, stay chuffed, everybody. <laughs>